I did a video a few weeks back about the first serial killer in England. Now I bring you the most vicious female serial killer in recorded history. Some say that this did happen, but others have put it into the urban legend bag. Either way, this bitch earned herself the nicknames the Blood Countess and Countess Dracula. Hello and welcome back or welcome to my channel. If you don't know what's going on here, I'm a horror artist and I like to draw what I talk about in the videos. Now, I don't think anything in these videos are offensive, but if you are a sensitive person, you probably will. And I recommend basically trundling off and going to a more pleasant channel because you're probably going to be very upset with this one. With that being said, let's move on with the video. This is the story of Elizabeth Bathory. Bathory was born in near Bator, the Kingdom of Hungary, which is now Slovakia, on the 7th of August 1560 and was born into a very noble, wealthy family. Her father was Baron George VI Baltori, brother of the Vovod of Transylvania, Andrew Bonaventura Baltori. Her mother was Baroness Anne Baltori, who was the daughter of another Vovod of Transylvania, but they were related. So allegedly inbreeding was going on to keep the blood pure, the royalty blood at that, pure throughout the generations. She spent her childhood at Est Castle and apparently suffered from multiple seizures as a child, which was put down to epilepsy, some of many health issues that she had as a child due to the possible inbreeding. She was apparently subject to quack cures, such as having a non-epileptic person's blood put onto her lips to ingest. Hmm, this may be the reason why she had blood tendencies, which... I will get into later. There also has been speculation that throughout her childhood she was exposed to and taught witchcraft, satanic worship and to be sadistic, cruel and use torture techniques. She apparently witnessed officers on her family's estate torturing peasants and thieves. She was blessed with education, wealth, property and good looks and at the age of 11 or 12 she was promised off to another Hungarian aristocrat named Ferenc Nadeszde but a year into their relationship she apparently fell pregnant with another man's baby, someone who was of a lower socioeconomic class so the birth was kept hush hush and the child, a daughter, was given away to be looked after by another family. Nadesty allegedly had the lover castrated and torn into pieces by savage dogs. In 1575, when Baltori was 15, she married 19-year-old Nadesty, but because she outranked her husband, she kept her Baltori surname, and Nadesty had Baltori added to his name. The young couple lived in the Shade to Castle, a wedding gift from Nadesty to Baltori, where Baltori was left most of the time because Nadesty was a chief commander of the Hungarian troops and was sent to war in the surrounding villages against the Ottomans. Baltori would look after the estates, affairs and deal with local people, giving advice and care to destitute people. Baltori and Nadesty had five children and some speculate that one died as an infant and on the 4th of january 1604 after 29 years of marriage nadesty died at the age of 48 after a battle with a mysterious illness that attacked his lower limbs for two years before his death which left him disabled all wealth and property was inherited by Baltori. This is when Baltori's dark activity started getting around. By 1604, the rumours surfaced of her cruel ways towards other girls and women. Her cousin George Thurzo, Count of Palatine, was sent to investigate her by Matthias, the King of Hungary. It was alleged that between 1602 and 1609, Bartori and her servants had killed over 600 women, including other noble women. She apparently would bathe in the blood of young virgin women to keep her young and would also drink it, hence her nickname Countess Dracula, due to her vampire-style manner. 
gentry families would send their daughters between the ages of 10 to 14 to the castle so Beltori could teach them etiquette, but little did they know that some would become her victims. Other victims were lured there by promise of work as a maid or servant. Baltori loved using needles and scissors as torture devices, using needles to insert into victims' lips, fingernails, cutting the webbing between their fingers, burning them with hot irons, biting and mutilating victims' hands, faces, breasts, limbs, and starving them and beating them to death. Some peasant girls were smeared with honey and left on ants' nests, left victims naked in the snow to die, made sausages out of their flesh, and apparently Nadesty built her a torture device to make her happy. Nadesty kept a lid on most of her urges to torture, but when he died, she got worse and unleashed a rain of hell on innocent women and moved from peasants to the noble women, and this was her undoing. She also may have went insane or just couldn't cope from losing him. In December of 1610, she was apparently caught in the act by her cousin Thurzo, which had her arrested with four of her servants following three witness statements and 80 counts of murder. They went to trial and were all found guilty and three of the servants were executed by being burnt alive and by being her accomplices as well, and the fourth sentenced to life in prison. The servants apparently swore they never killed, they just buried the victims. Because of Baltori's status, she was not put on trial. She was sent to house arrest in Shater Castle and walled up in a room with no windows to look out of like solitary confinement in 1611. Baltori died in 1614 at the age of 54 and was originally buried at the castle's church, but the locals did not agree, so she was exhumed and moved to her birth home of Exed. According to the Guinness Book of Records, Baltori was named the most vicious female serial killer of all time with possible 650 victims. Allegedly, there was a victim's book that Baltori kept of all the names of the victims, but this book was never found. Bodies were hidden all around in places unknown, so no one really does know the real body count. It's just all speculation, but some historian professors don't believe this story at all, and it's just all a conspiracy or urban legend. It wasn't rare that wealthy women back then got accused of murder and other crimes to gain access and ownership of their assets. So apparently these tortures and murders took place in an underground tunnel underneath the castle used for escaping in emergencies. And apparently there was speculation that Thurzo made it all up to gain her wealth and land. There was even hearsay that she was never in the castle as she travelled a lot between the other numerous castles and estates and didn't know what the servants were doing. There is also allegedly a letter from a priest in 1602 describing the cruel manner in which Beltori and her husband would treat the servants. Also, some were not happy that a woman was in power and how she was betrayed. She would allegedly write in letters about how she would be bullied by men who tried to threaten her, and who knows if the blood baths were real, as this was apparently added to the story a hundred years after she died. Now, Bartori and Nadesti's children were Osolia, Anna, Catalin, Andreas and Paul, and apparently these children went on to marry other noble people. So what do you think about this story? Do you think that this story was real, real but exaggerated, or just plain bullshit and made up to destroy a woman to gain her land, but apparently the documentation and testimonies are still in the Hungarian archives. And I reckon we should get them out and we should have a look at them. Have you heard about this story as well? And is there anything else that you would like to add to the story? Like, let me know in the comments below anything that I had missed or anything like that. If there's any information that's out there in the deep dark web 
that uh, you have found out about this particular woman because I'm very curious to know if this was an urban legend or if this was really true but if there is archives in the Hungarian archives system then there must be some truth to it but I would like to know if this Paul well, this woman I wouldn't say poor at the moment but if this woman was framed and in that case she would be a <laughs> she would be a poor woman um, or if she really did do this like yeah I'd really like to know but let me know your thoughts in the comments below now the illustration that I decide to do for the video today um, is I don't know I, I feel as though again I'm not entirely happy with this one for some reason like I just I don't know I seem to be um, not happy at the moment with the work that I'm doing but the thought that I had for this particular story was of of Baltori uh, torturing a woman in the uh, like in a chamber underneath the castle and she's basically mutilated her by cutting off her limbs like you've got her her arm is uh, hanging on the wall being nailed to the wall so has the foot her legs are gone god knows where they've gone probably uh you know chucked in the bath with the blood you know apparently <laughs> um she's the other arm still intact but it's hanging via a chain and she's got pins placed in her lips and all over around her body in the head in her arms uh, down on her thighs as well and but Tori's sitting down uh, looking very uh, pretty and very aristocratic with a metal uh, pole jamming it into her uh, the other the woman's sides um, for torture but I don't think this woman's even alive anymore she's probably lost that much blood but she just is having a great old time torturing this poor woman she's also got her throat slit as well um, and yeah I've also added an element to sort of portray how much of a monster Beltori was if she really did commit all these crimes I wanted to do her hands like a very reptilian type hand so she's like changing uh, into this um, monster and I also did a little bit of subtle green sort of scales on the side of her face and yeah just wanted to wanted to uh, portray the absolute monster if the story's real that she was because she really was if she did this like how horrible can you be and why would you do this to people but anyway there's only a couple of weeks now until inktober and i'm going to be doing inktober so i'm looking forward to that and all the preparation into that it's uh yeah gonna be gonna be exciting and I don't know what I'm gonna do yet but I will have a video released on what I'm going to be using um, just the usual bullshit that I do every year just to you know let you know what I'm doing it's not much is gonna change from the usual but I'll still release the video anyway and uh, yeah that is basically it from me I am out of here um, if you like this kind of content like and subscribe dislike it I couldn't care less and I will see you guys in the next one bye